Are you making a short animated project that's either a short film, a sizzle reel, a trailer, a proof of concept, and you'd like to do whatever you can to just get it done and just to finish it? Here are my top mistakes and pitfalls that one can fall into that can jeopardize the overall short animated project and may eventually lead you to just giving up. And I also share solutions to prevent them. Hey guys, this is Nico Pantoa, and today I'd like to talk about my top common mistakes beginners make with their animated short. To be fair, it isn't just beginners that make this mistake. I make this mistake, a lot of professionals make this mistake when they work on animated shorts. Now, when I talk about animated shorts, it isn't just a short film with a short story. This also includes trailers, proof of concepts, short tests that have a sequence. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the common mistakes I and many beginners make when it comes to making shorts that might jeopardize the actual project. By the way, I'm kind of leaving out story, writing, or any of that matter. I think animated shorts can still be entertaining and engaging without good story. Like sizzle reels, proof of concepts, short tests, they don't necessarily have good stories that can stand alone. What I'll be talking about is just for the production's sake. Number one, which I think is pretty common, is your project is too ambitious and it's too epic. Maybe it's your first short, or maybe you've only done a few shorts, and for this short, you have a grand idea, you want it to be epic, you want to be big, and honestly, that happens to me too. And I'm very well aware of this mistake because I've started a bunch of different short film ideas, but I never finished it because they were just too big for me. So you may be asking, how big is big in my definition? Well, it also depends on your capabilities too. Some people can finish, let's say, 16 feet of animation per week, while some will just spend days on just a single shot that's only four seconds long. At CalArts, there was always a handful of first years or second years who wanted to do epic films or films that were just really ambitious. When I was a student, we had this thing called the second year epic, and this happens when a first year finishes their first short film and they feel more confident and they know how to finish a film. So when they start their new film, they have grand ideas and they think that they have the capabilities to finish a project. But what usually happens is that these people realize that they don't have the capabilities, they are not skilled enough, they don't have enough manpower, and reality just sinks in. And either the student doesn't finish their film, or the film isn't as best as it could be. At CalArts, the animation program always had a guideline and restriction for each year. First years had to shoot under 90 seconds and have no dialogue. Second years got 2 minutes and 30 seconds with dialogue if they wanted. Third years got a bump up to 4 minutes and fourth years got up to 8 minutes. But that's really just for the producer show guideline that the school has. But I think it's a good rule to follow especially if you're doing a film for the first time. I would suggest making a really short film for your first time and have a simple idea. Don't shoot for anything too ambitious or epic. And over time when you make more shorts then you'll feel more confident in adding more ambition, more effort, more production value, and you'll have a good idea of how much you can measure, how much work you can produce, and the quality of work that you can produce. Number two, production wise, starting at the very first shot until the last shot from beginning to end. If you really want to keep your film consistent, then I would advise against this. As you animate your characters over time, the design and style of your characters change due to you having found solutions to animating the design and making it work in your favor. So this means that the design and style will change over time since the first time you drew and animated that character. If the first few shots have an early version of how you animated that character towards the end where it's more developed, it would stick out like a sore thumb. I think people are more forgiving about the middle parts, or to be specific, the middle parts that have scenes that aren't super important. So if you're starting animation, I would advise starting in the middle. Personally, I like to start with shots that have a lot of movement, a lot of action, just so that I have a full scope of how I can move the character how the character moves, and how I animate that character. And then maybe working your way towards the ending of the film and then the start of your film. That way the start and end of your film are more consistent, whereas the middle, it might not be as consistent, but I think people are more forgiving. So if I have enough time to go back to fix the first shots that I animated in the middle, then I'll use that extra time to redo those shots to make the whole film feel a little more consistent. Unless you want the film to gradually change over the running time, I would just say start somewhere in the middle. Number three, thinking that the acting and timing beats in storyboard represent animation timing. Unless your storyboards are fully animated and you're just using your storyboards as rough animation reference, you have to realize that what reads really well in storyboards may not work well when animating. 
To me, the beauty of storyboarding is that you can just come up with a few drawings, a few poses just to sell a single idea. When it comes to animation, and if you're someone who wants to put a lot of animation in your film, what usually happens is that not only do animators like to fully animate the shot with a lot of in-betweens and subtle movement, but they like to add a lot more acting detail and a lot of more acting nuances to the character performance. So what happens is that people tend to over-animate the performance, and the performance might just feel chaotic and busy. The simple pacing of your storyboard suddenly feel too chaotic when it's all edited with full animation. And here's a tip that I like to remind myself. Storyboards, it helps get the idea across. Animation, it helps get the subtext across. And that's a lot harder to describe in a short amount of time. So a single drawing that lasts for let's say 4 seconds in a storyboard feels right. But when we're trying to convey that same exact idea in storyboards, but when we try to replicate that same idea in animation with a lot more acting nuances, it just feels a lot more busier and tiresome. And will make the film feel fast paced. So I do have a few suggestions on how you can remedy this. One would be to be more decisive and thoughtful of your acting choices. Pick just a few poses that gets the idea across and already has all those acting nuances in that single pose. Think of it as performance organization in your animation. Two is that you can select a few consecutive shots from your storyboards that feel cutty and combine all those ideas from those panels into just a single shot. Therefore, you have more breathing space for your acting and it would feel less chaotic and cutty. And three, like my suggestion earlier, is to fully animate your storyboard so you can just use that as your rough animation. But that's if you're the type of guy who over animates your storyboards. I like to keep storyboarding and animation separately. Number four, treating the complexity of every shot the same way. Not every shot of the film should require the same amount of effort, not every shot of the film can be finished under the same amount of time, and not every shot is as important as others. So what I want you guys to start doing, especially from your storyboards, is to start defining which shots have priority and which shots are minimal priority. I like to label them in A, B, and C. A being challenging and will need more time, B being not challenging but will need effort, not as much time, C being not so important, and you can save this for later. It's a sacrificial shot, so if you don't make the deadline, you don't mind if this shot isn't as finished as the others. So take the time to look at your shots, start figuring out which will be challenging, which won't require a lot of effort, and start figuring out a schedule for you to work with. The more challenging shots or the more shots that require effort, the more time you'll need. Again, if you're in a tight deadline, save C shots for the very last since they aren't so important to have so much effort, and it's something that maybe you can quickly do or get out of the way if you need to. What I would recommend you guys to do is either do a pipeline test or finish a shot from its rough version to its final look. That way you would understand the whole process and you'll have a better understanding in how you can break down the overall process of your film into your schedule. Number five, not properly scheduling or just bad scheduling in your production. So this can mean that you don't give enough time for more complex shots or you only work on your film last minute before it's due if you have a due date. It's like the mistake where you realize that the film is too ambitious for you. You'll realize that it's more complicated than it looks. So you kind of have to take the time to figure out how long it takes for you to animate something, how long it takes for you to paint backgrounds, and make a schedule that can work in your favor. Here's a tip that I'd like to give when it comes to short film productions. Making a short, animated short, or animated movie is not a sprint, unless it's a 48 hour lockdown film, but making a short or any personal project, again, it's a marathon. Have a steady pace throughout. Number six is oddly specific, but it can easily jeopardize your film's production, which is not making sure your frames per second matches with your production overall. In animation and short filmmaking, having matching FPS or frames per second is everything. The standard I use and a lot of animation productions use 24 frames per second, technically for standalone HD format, 23.976 FPS. But whatever weird FPS you use, make sure it matches everything else for video editing sake. You'll start to notice problems if you're trying to put in 24 FPS shots when your, let's say, animatic timeline is 30 frames per second, or you used the 30 FPS animatic, for example, to count how many frames each shot is for something that's 24 frames per second. And when you put it together in video editing, you'll notice that some shots appear way longer or way shorter than you intended it to be. And it can really screw up editing wise, sound design wise. You'll have to do last minute adjustments such as extending a single shot or shortening a single shot. And this might 
involves sacrificing some animation work, and it's happened to me multiple times. This problem can also ruin the intended pacing you have for the film. Number 7. Banking on the film too much to be meaningful. Successful. Maybe your film is the one to fill your dark soul with lie. 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 Look, adding so much pressure to your film would mean so much unnecessary pressure to you. It'll just make you so much more angsty and it might be so unbearable that you might just want to give up on your film. I'm going to have to explain this just a little more. I think it's okay to have expectations for a film. I think it's okay to have expectations for where this film will take you, what opportunities it might open. I think that's totally normal. But there might be a possibility that you might be banking too much of your expectations on this film. Meaning that if you finish the film and if it doesn't take you to places that you want it to, you just deem it as a failure. And this mindset is generally bad to have. Not every film you make is going to be a success. Not every film is going to take you to places. And if you just think that, oh, this film didn't take me to places, it's a failure, I don't want to make any more films, it just makes you want to give up, right? When I did my student films at CalArts, I had these high expectations for my films so they would get me internships at studios like Pixar, DreamWorks, and Disney. And guess what? I never got any summer gig or internships. So what did I do? I beat myself over the head of it. I compared myself to my classmates who did get internships. It just gave me a poisonous mindset that just made me compare myself to my classmates. It destroyed me emotionally and it created rifts in my friendships. And it wasn't until like my third or fourth year that I just decided I want to have fun and I just want to learn stuff and I just want to make films just for the sake of it. I like telling stories. I like learn something new that will help me down the line. I like having fun with the overall process. So the way I approach or make films or personal projects such as sizzle reels or proof of concepts is just there for me to learn something. It's also there for me to express a story. And can it help me get to places and higher opportunities? Absolutely. I can send these films to film festivals. I can use my films to prove my employers that I understand a workflow and a pipeline and that I can use it to sell a creative vision. If you're working in animation, I kind of encourage everyone to just try making a film from beginning to end. Because there are a lot of people that can animate, there are a lot of people that can storyboard, a lot of people share the same skills that you do, but not a lot of people share a similar vision, an aesthetic, a sensibility that only you can offer, and the best way I think you can offer that is through personal projects like a short film. So again, don't bank your success and happiness on your project when you finish it, because that's just going to make you not love the craft. Rather focus on the learning experience, to share your vision, to express stories. Those opportunities will come down the line later down the future. Remember, if you're thinking about directing or leading a project that's much bigger, that needs more people, more people are willing to work with you because they can sense the joy and passion that you have when it comes to making films. I mean, imagine finishing a project that you led and you're like, oh my god, that project sucked, we failed, we all failed guys. It just ruins the whole vibe and it's just not good in the long run career-wise for you. Anyways, those are just my thoughts. If you guys have any ideas or anything that you'd like to share that you consider a common mistake to you when it comes to short filmmaking, please share it down below. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.